and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Bannerman Quinn. What we're doing today during our 12 hour stream is we're bringing back a lot of the decks from this week that looked really good. Um, you know, we were playing tw uh, 10 decks for our 12 hour stream. And so even though we just played Bannerman Quinn two days ago, gonna bring this back because yeah, it looked really, really solid. We went 5-0 um, with it last time. Doesn't mean that we're gonna 5-0 again. That's not easy. But I liked this um, aggressive version of, you know, it's basically just a, a Demacia Bannerman deck, but, you know, splashing uh, Misfortune and Quinn and getting some some extra scout cards with Quinn, um, Grizzled Ranger, and Genevieve Elmhart at the top end. Um, also, uh, you know, we didn't really use the back-to-back -back last time. We talked about maybe making it a Concerted Strike or something else, but we're going to keep the back-to-back -back for right now. Concerted Strike was awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, and Hired Gun was pretty good. Let's, let's just, you know, kind of run it back, same deck, and see how it is. There is just a ton of Demacia decks right now, and just even over since we played this even two days ago, there's been a, even more. And so, um, with that being said, that means that there's more uh, hate starting to develop for Demacia decks. So we'll see how it continues to play out. All right, let's get rid of our six drops against the Burn deck. Playing against Burn. Bird is the kind of deck that if they have a really good hand, they're probably winning. Like they, their deck beats basically everything if their hand's good enough. Yeah, Vi is really strong. Having toughness um, does make it pretty difficult to deal with. And I guess I'll trade War Chefs instead of trading Protector. You know, like we're trading one of these away. Well, that's a good start. Triple one drop is a good opener. Damn it. I kind of like going this instead of playing Misfortune. I like going this route so I can single combat and have this fight one of those. They're just passing. They gotta have. They have to have spells, right? It's it's worth it, right? Yeah. Because they use a burn spell on my war chefs. They're not using the burn spell on me. Hmm. Noxion fervor is great, by the way. That card is great. Darn it, they did have transfusion. Something they didn't have transfusion, because all we did was just throw this thing away for two damage, but I guess transfusion's out of their hand now. I thought about not blocking, but it just doesn't make sense to not block. Wait, this is actually bad for me. Wait. This is actually bad for me, isn't it? Oh no. Oh no. I didn't I didn't think about this. Uh, I shouldn't have played Misfortune, I should have played Protege. Um 11 10 
six, seven, three. Hmm. I can only put them down to three right now. So basically what the problem is if I attack, the Misfortune Trigger does one damage to the Crimson Disciple, which they block with, which, which then does two damage to me. That's crazy how... Yeah, I can't even can't even attack right there. That is crazy. Okay, I'll well, add a second Decimate. That's what I mean, though. When the Burn deck has a, a really great hand, like they're just going to win, which they did there. You know, triple one drop. Ugh. If I if I don't play Misfortune, we're still losing, so it's okay. The double demos or double de decimate late game, getting those last eight points of damage in. They did six points of damage in combat and fourteen outside of combat. I love that uh, the the new three mana card in Noxus deal three to any of your stuff and three to anything. So remember that with the fight. That was another three points of damage there. That card is is really really good. And uh, we're playing we're playing that same burn deck up next, and I'm playing three of those three of those cards because that card is awesome. All right, same matchup. Of course I'm ready. We have a lot of twos. Flavor and spice. No attacks, pass turn. Pass turn, no attacks. Okay, ready. Darn. Crimson Disciple is so good. Puppy dog sneezing over there. So we're taking two either way. Is that all? It's worth worth it to reduce that toughness to one. and turn. Get bloody, get paid. I probably am, I think I just attack. 
I don't think I actually um, challenge her the rear guard. Oh, maybe I do. Just gonna be blocking the rear guard anyway. But the thing is, like, like we we'll just be blocking it anyway. But we can get more damage in if we um, don't challenger it. Like, obviously, this is happening. So it's either attack for twelve, or attack, f or put him to eleven and take that thing, and do that. Those are the two options. Um, I think we'll do eleven. With double repost, we're probably going to be attacking for lethal any either from eleven or eight. Get that out of here. Alright, so it looks like this time the burn opponent's hand wasn't very good. So that's what it's looking like. Alright, so 1-1 one, one versus burn. One. No, there's a big puppy girl. I'll go. It's a doggo stream now. You want to play, puppy? You want to play? Chat saying hi, buddy. What do we got? Zed Garen. Let's get rid of these two. And keep those two. I can see Repost being pretty valuable. You do not have enough mana. We need more mana. Her name is Puppy, actually. That's her name. I know. Original. <laughs> but she was a, um, a stray dog. I was. This is probably. Five, six years ago, probably about six years ago, I was living out in the country, and I just go out to go to work one day, and uh, you know, go out my, my my side door to go to work, like the little porch, and and she's just sitting there on the porch. So somebody came and, and dropped her off on my porch, and. She was so small. I could I could fit her in, you know, like my like just like hold her like this, like just in my two hands. She was so small. She was just this little puppy, and I was like, oh, look at the little puppy. And so I just kind of kept calling her puppy. The cute little puppy. Yuck. Please control. I am my skill is unrivaled. That's real good.
Alright, hopefully this works. Come on, work. Alright. The good news is that Zed's now out of here. The bad news is they still got a bunch of cards. And I don't have a whole lot going on. <laughs> she's real shy. You can tell she's... I don't think she likes computer screens. of this round. So close to killing them, but just not quite there. Ooh. What do you do? Follow my lead. What do you do? What are you buying? Do they have like an attack token also? Like what is this? Is this my my scout attack or something? <laughs> hey Forks, thanks for stopping by. Okay, yeah, it's just a visual glitch. Uh I mean, I could attack with the Genevieve first, but it's like, what's the point? Let's do it like this and try to keep... Try to keep both of them alive. One more mana. I would have been able to repost the Warshaps and win. One more mana. Yeah, Riot came and gifted 30 subs the first day of uh, the new set coming out. They gifted 30 subs. It was awesome. The music on this board is so loud. I'm sorry if it's, if it's too loud. I... Does seem very loud. Yeah, attack one at a time. I like that. That's probably better. Play. It's so epic, though.
Yeah, that was really nice of them. So I think next turn I want the Elm Heart to be able to give these plus one, plus one. Wow, they had that in their hand? They didn't just play the monk and then kill me? Wow. Wow, puppy. So basically I'm trading like War Chef's dies here, but then their Badger Bear dies. So I'm trading a War Chef's for a Badger Bear. They could have also blocked for the Shadow Assassin, so then they wouldn't have so then they would have had two lethal creatures still. Right now they only have one, but obviously these other cards are probably pump spells. Or at least there's probably pump spells now. Super close game. It was a good one. Oh no, no pump spells. It's not yet. What else do they have in hand? They don't have pump spells. I guess I need to pull the Shadow Assassin, didn't I? There's just no way we don't lose. I guess they could have Zed standalone. Alright, one and two. GG's. That was still a super, super close game. Um, you know, with that standalone deck, we fought through a good amount, and we had zero champions. You know, we didn't draw a single champion that entire game. And we fought through, like, that that super-powered Zed um, at the beginning, and... Uh, yeah, that was, that was a really good game. Even though we lost... Super close. I thought we were going to have him um, that other turn when we played. When we replayed the six man. The six man of 4 4. I thought we were going to get him, but. That sta the uh, single combat kept him alive.
So we're not going to be 5-0 again with the deck, but... You know, we're, we're playing really good games. Two opponents got us. This, this game is just it's so hard to 5-0 every time. So that is a permanent vulnerable. That's not a vulnerable this round. So now that thing's permanently vulnerable. Can we stop playing against stupid standalone stuff, puppy? Like, yeah, good job. Hooray. We have a seven power elusive on turn three. Hooray. Hmm. Maybe Bannerman was the play. Yeah, I, I find this game harder to play than MTG myself. Um, there's like more to do with, with deck construction with Magic, but the actual gameplay, this is a lot more uh, skill based and, and more difficult, in my opinion. There's so much, so many more uh, real sequencing decisions. Fortune favors the bold. Yeah, the d deck build. I mean, the deck building will catch up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just basically like you know we have one set and now like an expansion set. It's so, like it will catch up, but. Um, you know, because there's been 26 years of magic. It'll, it'll, it'll get there, but... Um, Yeah, what's up, Clank? Yeah, puppy's super camera shy, as you can tell. Puppy, why are you so camera shy? Eight mana is rough. Really want nine mana for Banner Bannerman plus Concerted Strike. Um, Revenge. 
It's lame. That deck's so lame. Just a just turn three, getting a seven six elusive, and then you just race with that. That was fun. That's all I got to say. That was fun. Alright, basically the same deck again. Same-ish deck. I mean, there, there's different decisions I could have made better, probably. Like, if I would have played Bannerman instead of the 4-1, maybe they don't get to attack with the Zed. That could have saved me 3 life. Um, then I could play the 4-1 and challenge and challenge that thing twice. Like, I I didn't, I didn't, like, there's those two turns, like, basically that one turn of, of playing the 4-1 instead of Bannerman, that cost me that. So, I mean, I, I can complain and everything, but I'll say at the end of the day, that's my fault. No prey. No prey. So not only can't they, they block here, but I like how... I'm playing the Misfortune basically because we're going to have the Make It Rain. The Make It Rain can kill the tracker. Oh gosh, we can kill both trackers. No! I guess we have double Make It Rain. Make It Pour. No! No! Ugh. Well, we're only killing one of them. We dealt damage to the Nexus both times, which we don't really care to do damage to the Nexus. Just want to target these two. Oh, we're not even killing either one? I thought we were killing the one on the left for some reason. Oh my gosh, what a huge waste. What a huge waste. I didn't attack because they they passed, obviously expecting me to attack with all these cards and all this mana. They had they had five plus the three, so instead of just getting this trade done, which is probably going to happen anyway, we're, we're probably going to be able to take care of that. No big deal. I you know just time locked them and they didn't play anything. Has anybody ever beat, uh, anybody ever beat Grizzled Ranger? I feel like that's not possible. Unless you have a 10 powered elusive thing, like my opponent did last round. I guess 10 power elusives with deny protection. Can, but that's about it. Oh, that's weird, Moonlight. I don't know. I, I don't know why. The stream's not working.
So we play the other protege. We still have back to back available. They just pass again, they could be dead. Oh my gosh, double Grizzle Ranger? Come on. Come on. I guess I do this. Sinking. <laughs> she did. She's, she's sitting down on my lap now. I don't want to. I don't want to have repost be lethal. get a single combat out of them also. Oh no, okay, yeah, yeah, because the Scythria is still gonna, gonna go here, so yeah, that was necessary. Okay, never mind. Yeah, okay, sorry. It was worth it. This works. For the 
I would have gone with Garen and leveled up Garen. Yeah, I definitely would have gone Garen, not the Radiant Guardian. That that life total doesn't matter. I mean, so like we're we're gonna lose here, but it's a lot better play to use the judgment on the Garen. Because then the Garen would level up, they would have the attack token again. game ends up being over, but, uh, yeah. Alright, King of Star. Yeah, have a good one. Okay, so, you know, like, just a couple of days ago, this deck felt incredible. You know, we went 5-0. This time, we went 1-4. It shows how close all of these games are. It's not like we were getting blown out in those games. A lot of, you know, like, those games are, you know, couple of different draws here or there like maybe they go the other way but but um you know we're not going our way today um yeah it's it's a it's a really close game and, and every decision matters you know a couple of those games or at least at least one of them i know one sequencing of playing a ranger over a bannerman that cost me um so the other you know, uh, Demacia decks were kind of going over the top. Misfortune, this video, Misfortune didn't look good. And that's what we're doing is we're splashing for Misfortune. But both Mis Misfortune didn't look good. And then we just never, you know, we hardly ever had Quinn. And other people had, like, their top end. And so they were going, like, the uh, the other Demacia decks were going bigger. And when you're playing Demacia Mirrors, it's who goes bigger is going to win. Um, you don't, like, Demacia decks don't really go under the other deck hardly ever so it is good to have like a lot of top end and, and uh, be able to go bigger you just have to make sure you can stay alive and get there still so obviously you don't want to just have a deck of all four fives and sixes but yeah um but anyway uh, another question do you think they will do set root rotation in Rune Terra? Yeah, I, th I think so. Eventually, that's that's something that we just kind of have to see what their plan is for that. If you think about like how this set, set came out, they added in ten cards from every region and a brand new set. If you think about, it, they can't just do that every single time, right? Like they're not going to have you know the next time like ten new cards and then like seventy new cards in a new region. Like that can't be like the the set release forever. They can't just have like that many regions. So when will it be where it's just, you know, cards from the existing regions? And then at that point, if you're doing, you know, after a while, if they, if they do introduce a new region, how is that? Like, let's say, let's say they do that and you start having like a hundred cards in each region and then they want to do a new region. Do they just have to have a hundred new cards in the, the new region and start um, having it the same as the others? It's going to be... Um, difficult okay so there, there are only three more regions in the lore okay so maybe they could do that three more times you know then go to like 83 for each and then 93 for each then 103 for each they're they're going to like those new sets will start being huge but um yeah they could probably do that three more times um okay so there's 10 regions total yeah like the the new expansions coming up afterwards will will be huge. Ooh, there's a desert region. Desert region. Um but yeah. All right, so we'll we'll move on to uh yeah, so I don't, I don't know how they'll do it. So yeah, I guess I guess maybe that's the plan. Maybe the next 3 expansions are each of the next 3 the last 3 regions and then um and then after that then you know, kind of split up cards from all of the 10 regions, I suppose. Um, so there's a desert theme with Sharima. And Targon is a huge mountain. And then there's a void region. Wow. Yeah, that's that's some... Those are going to be some cool regions. That's pretty sweet. All right, but anyway, uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Um, 
And uh, yeah, if you got any ideas for how you think they'll do it, let me know. Um, also kind of think of, you know, like they're going to run out of champions, right? Like if, you know, we got 11 new champions this expansion, like after a little while, like they eventually have to run out of champions. I wonder if they're going to be like with Magic, they have like the Planeswalkers, you know, like Nissa, for example. Nissa has, you know, a dozen different cards. Like there's a dozen, dozen different like Nissa, comma, whatever. I wonder if they'll start doing that. You know, like it'll be like a different Lucian and a different Fiora and a different Fizz and stuff like that. Well, I mean, if you're, yes, they, they, they will run out. I mean, if, if you're talking about over the long haul, like over, you know, years and years, you, you think they're never going to run out? If, Cause if they do like three updates a year or four updates a year, um, which I think they're probably at three updates a year, a year an update every four months of like a, a new expansion every four months, I think, um, I mean, I guess if they, if they keep if they keep on just yeah making more and more champions, I guess maybe they won't run out. Um, but then if if they if they uh, go that route, and then uh, where they make more champions, they never run out. But then there's also rotation. Then these these original champions, you know, like Lucian, Fiora, you know, these original champions, they'll if they rotate out, then you'll never get to play them again because if they don't make new versions of them. So if you're like a big fan of Fiora, if like in a year or two, you know, in two years or three years, or whatever, Fiora rotates out, then you just don't get to play Fiora anymore if they keep on adding more champions. Um, so there's there's some things to kind of see how what's going to happen long term. There's there's kind of things to decide from from their end that, you know, I'm sure they're having these kind of discussions internally. Um but all right we got a bunch more decks to play today let's move on we're going to be playing some burn up next let's burn an eight all right uh but anyway thanks so much for watching some bannerman quinn